Hello, hello. So, welcome to Yin Yoga. I'm excited to be here with you guys tonight. And when, for those of you that are watching this later, thanks for spending time to devote to your own self care. Our class tonight has to do with the joints. And the reason I picked the joints is because. Um, I've actually been <laughs> dealing with some joint issues personally, uh, especially my shoulders, my hips, my knees, and um, my thumb lately. And I thought, well, I'm probably not the only one that might be having struggles or whatever with, the, with their joints. And so I decided to go ahead and build a class around working on them specifically let's talk real quick about things that you might need tonight blocks come in handy when we're working with the hips and the knees which we will be doing and then if you have a bolster um you can maybe have that have that nearby but it's not you can probably get by without it um a blanket only if you typically use one during shavasana for those of you that like to have oils um, for your practice in order to help you uh, take in that essential oil, some of those good um, herbs and things like that while you're practicing. Please don't hesitate to grab your favorite bottle. Tonight I brought in Valor. And Valor is the one that they actually call, um, oh, it just like slipped my mind chiropractor in a bottle. I was like, it just went <laughs> and then it came back. Um, they call it chiropractor in a bottle because I'll read this real quick. It says it's to empower the physical and spiritual bodies to help you overcome the, op the fear of opposition, to help build courage, confidence, and self-esteem, to align the physical structure of the body, relieving pain along the spine. It balances and aligns the electrical energies in the body, and it is touted as the chiropractor in a bottle. So um, it is a, bl a blend. It's got spruce, rosewood, blue, tang blue tansy, and frankincense in it. So um, if you are, have never heard of Valor, now you have. I love it, and it's like, it's purple, and it reminds me of grape. Uh, even though it doesn't have grape in it, that's what it reminds me of. Okay, the other thing that I would highly encourage if you like um, to have uh, crystals nearby, I've got my little um, basket of crystals right here next to me, so I am ready to go. So let's talk about the joints. The joints are mainly for a support system in your body. It's all about, if you think about the joints in the body, they are offering support. You've got two things that are typically coming together. The joint is the connection to bring those two things together and then offer the support that you need in order to be mobile. And there's a lot of, um, a lot of different emotions that can be stored in the joints of the body that have to do with support or lack of support, motivation or lack of motivation. Um, so I feel like when we're doing our practice today, what I thought about doing is kind of working into the energy fields that are running um, up and down like our meridian lines and see if we can promote some healing to help cleanse and purify the energy that's in our joints today. Um, let's see. Um, the other thing about um, working in the joints, uh, which is going to be along the lines of how I came up with the theme, um, when you're working with the joints, you have internal and external rotation. And so with internal and external rotation, you have duality. You have one thing and then the other. And which really, if you look at it and then break it down, it's taking two different perceptions of something. And um, when you 
are able to do yoga poses that will do internal and external rotation, what you're actually doing is bringing about better balance in, in the energy of those, of those joints. So we're going to start today in a seated position, and I'm going to let you pick whatever position that is, whether it's I'm in a half butterfly myself here. If you would rather have your legs in, um, in an easy pose, then that's another option, or even having them straight out in caterpillar. So whatever is comfortable for you, let's go ahead and close your eyes. We wanna focus primarily on the breath in order to allow us to let go of everything that's, hop that's happening externally right now. We want to come in to um, our space right here on our mats. So any random thoughts that are still lingering in the forefront of your mind, give yourself permission to set them aside for now where you can pick them up later. And that may take a little while to filter through the thoughts and that's no problem. Just one by one going through them and offering for them to be set aside. And then every time come, just come back to your breath. Feeling each inhale and exhale. The breath is utilized into every single particle of your being. And we are going to focus about breathing oxygen into every particle of our body today. So when you breathe in, allow the sensation to be in your upfront awareness. What does it feel like when you're breathing in? Are you feeling it tickle in the nose? Are you feeling a temperature in the nose as you're breathing in and breathing out? If you have a specific intention for your practice today, now would be a good time to repeat that mentally in your mind. If you don't have an intention, maybe it's just gratitude for being able to take the time because this was a choice you made to spend on your mat today. Take a deep breath in through the nose and this time allow your exhale to be an H.A. Ha sound. As you go back out. Good. All right. Slowly begin to open your eyes. We are going to be kind of, again, we're going to start at the top and move down through our body as we go through the joints. Um, I don't typically classify the spine as a joint, <laughs> but there's a lot of joints in the spine. So we're going to start with the neck. And let's bring our chin down toward our chest first. And once the chin is toward the chest, bring your awareness now into the sensation at the back of your head, right at the base of the skull. And I'd like you to focus on bringing your next inhale straight into that space right there. It's, a, it's just, and it's only happening in your mind but your body is listening. So breathe into that space right at the base of the skull and breathe that oxygen straight down the vertebrae of your neck. And then, and then maybe mentally in your mind, saying to yourself, 
I breathe this oxygen in to every particle of my neck and how it moves and creates space. And just take a few more calm, relaxing breaths. Just focusing again on the vertebrae right there in your neck. And now I'd like you to inhale, bring your head back up to center and then exhale and tilt your head toward your left shoulder. Now we've done this many times before. And again, this is totally up to you whether you want to do this or not. If you are tilting your head to your left, you'll take your right fingertips and maybe just the peace fingers. And I'd like you to rub right, like touch them right behind the back of your right ear. And that's where I want you to focus breathing into is right there at the back of the ear. You're on the skull. And if you slide your fingertips down, you're at the occipital ridge. And it's maybe just right there at the bottom base of the skull. Breathe again into that space of your fingertips. And then draw your fingertips down the large muscles that are on the side of your neck. Keep breathing into them. And invite the oxygen into the muscles, asking them to relax and to release. Relax your arm back down, and then we're going to inhale and bring our head back up to center. Exhale right there in the neutral space. Take another deep breath in. And when you exhale, tilt your head toward the right shoulder. We're going to do the same thing. You'll take your peace fingers and touch right behind the back of the left ear. Breathing into that space that your fingertips are touching. Sliding the fingers down just about an inch or so until you're at the base of the occipital ridge. Bring your intention into breathing oxygen into every particle of the muscles. Asking them to turn off, turn loose. Sliding the fingertips down the muscles through the side of your neck. Relax your left arm, inhale, bring your head back up to center, exhale your breath. All right, this time we're gonna work in the front of the throat and I'd like you to take your index fingers and you're gonna place them on either side of the jaw. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. All right, start to tilt your head back a little bit. And as long as you don't have pain, you can tilt your head back, your chin will lift up. And then bring your index fingers to the top of the collarbone on both sides. So each index finger is now touching the knobs of the collarbone. And I want you to just tap them lightly. Little bitty taps. 
All right, we're gonna start working our way out toward the shoulders, but we're gonna stop halfway in. And I'd like you to go, so you're basically going, so from where you were tapping, go about two inches, and then you should be um, kind of uh, in the middle of the neck on both sides. So not in the front, not at the side, but kind of in the middle. And then take your fingertips and put them inside the top of the collarbone and where you feel the muscles connect down. So the muscles in the front of your neck are gonna connect down to your collarbone in here. And I'd like you to just place your fingertips lightly on these muscles where they connect at the collarbone. Take another deep breath in, tilting your head back. Exhale. Good, inviting the breath in a few more times, asking these muscles to turn off and to turn loose. Inhale, bring your head back to center. This time we're gonna take the fingertips on the traps. These are the muscles that are coming across the top of the shoulders, but on the back side of your body. So your elbows are kind of lifted up in the air like wings as you bring your fingers onto the top of your trapezius muscles. All right, good job. All right, tilting your head down again, just like we did at the very beginning. Take a deep breath in and an exhale through your mouth. Take a deep breath in and invite the oxygen into the trapezius muscles, asking them to turn off and to turn loose. We'll breathe about three more times into these muscles. Breathing out through your mouth will push the energy of those muscles out of your body. All right, relax, shake out your arms, especially if you're getting any tension in the elbows. Okay, we're gonna do two rotations. We're gonna do a rotation in one direction and then in the other. So start with your head down and then just start to breathe as you rotate your head all the way around. Make sure you're rolling your shoulders back and down. Once you complete that spiral, go the other direction. And then inhale, bring your shoulders straight up towards your ears. Exhale, roll the shoulders all the way back and down. We're going to do the opposite of that. Inhale, bring it straight up. And roll them forward and down. Okay, we're going to do that again two more times back. Inhale, bring it up. This is an external rotation as we roll the shoulders back. Pull them up, roll them back one more time. Okay, now we're gonna go up toward the ears and forward. This is our internal rotation. One more time, you'll roll them all the way around. Good. All right, now we're moving into the internal rotation of the shoulders by bear hugging all the way around. And I like to put my hands on top of my shoulders because it reminds me to pull them down. <laughs> Otherwise they start working their way up towards your ears. So pull them down. Remember that because we're sitting up, we have to support the low back here. It is good to actively engage through the pelvic girdle, engaging the muscles. Maybe that's Maybe you can feel that if you squeeze the glutes, it coincides with the muscles in your abdominal. Okay, what, look at what elbow is on top, you guys, and switch it. So bring your arms out and then just switch. Good. 
And then remember, you're pulling the shoulders down. This is going to lengthen through your spine when you do so. We are in an internal rotation of the shoulders right now. On your next exhale, open your arms up. And now we're going to go external rotation. You're going to reach behind you. When you reach behind you, this just depends on the range of motion and how flexible your joints are. Some of you can grasp behind you really easy and some of you may have difficulty. So I am grabbing and holding my forearms personally. Some of you may be able, because I don't have, I have very um, weak shoulders from a lot of injury. But if you are able to like bring your hands together back behind you, please feel free to, to go into the range of motion that you're capable of. I want you to, again, ground through the sits bones, lift the heart, draw the shoulders back, and maybe even pull the elbows a little closer toward each other and see if you can stretch and open through the front of the pec muscles. You're gonna feel the collarbone as it's pulling the muscles across there as we externally rotate the shoulders. Good, one more deep breath here. Exhale, let go of the arms, shake them out. Okay, we're gonna move into the wrist and um, with the wrist, we're just going to really just kind of flip them um, over. But here's the, here's the thing that I would say think about. Pull your elbows in and kind of connect them to the side of your body and just turn the wrist. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to find that you're moving more than, you're moving like the whole arm. So yeah, just the wrist. Uh, flipping the palms up and down. Good. Two more times. All right, shake them out. Okay. You guys okay with the upper body? Okay, good deal. Okay, we're going to move into the, the hips now. So we're going to come down the body. As we move into the hips, we're going to start with half butterfly. So... Bring one leg out to the side and pull your other foot in. This is where if you have any issues with the knees, a block can come in handy. You can always place a block underneath the knee joint. Also pay attention to the leg that's extended. If you have any pain in the back of that knee, then it might help to take a, a little pillow or a blanket and put it under that knee to create some support if you need it. Now in half butterfly, um, the, the leg that is bent is an external rotation of the hip joint. Once you get yourself settled in this position, close your eyes. We're going to breathe into the hips. So we're going to direct the breath into the hip. If you don't know what the hip looks like, if you've never seen a picture of the hip joint, just imagine like a ball and socket. And then Imagine that your breath, that the oxygen can come in and move around that ball and socket, and it actually purifies and cleanses the joint. Sometimes you can imagine like water is raining down over it, or maybe that water is just moving through it. Sometimes you can imagine that it's like um, a mist or energetic particles that are moving around the joint and we're working again into the joint that's doing the external rotation so whatever knee is bent we're working into that hip good just a few more moments here 
And if you're thinking, you know, why am I breathing into the hip? Again, your body knows what you're focusing on. And the intention is to bring um, whatever your body needs by directing the oxygen to that space. Okay, we're going to go into the internal rotation of that hip now. So let's start by bringing the, the leg that was straight, bring it straight out in front of you and pick up the leg that was bent and set your foot straight down. Okay, lean back on your hands and slide that foot out to the side of the mat. Okay, and then turn the knee in. That is your internal rotation right there. Some of you, this is going to be plenty. You don't need to go any further, right? If you have more range of motion of the hip and the knee, then take your bent leg foot and pull it behind you. This is going to compress the knee more. It's going to put it on the ground. And then it also gives you an opportunity to stretch through the front arch of this ankle on this side. I do highly encourage you to pull the toes back so that you can get the stretch across the ankle instead of having the foot turned out like this. Pull the toes back. Now remember, if you've got um, sensitivity in the knee and the hip, just having the foot flat on the ground and just turning the knee in is the, is the uh, goal, basically, that we're looking for for the internal rotation. Mike, are you doing okay? Okay. <laughs> As he falls over. <laughs> All right, good. So what this is, the pose here is half saddle. It is stretching the front of the quadricep as well. That might be a big stretch for some of you. Remember, remember to pay attention to what's happening in the knee because the knee is what is being compressed here. So let's take about four more breaths and we wanna direct the breath now. We've already done the hip, now let's do the knee. So again, you can just think of a ball and socket, you know, if you don't, if you already know like what your knee looks like on the inside, if you were to peel back your skin, go ahead and go there. Let your mind go there because your body loves that when we're actually paying attention and focusing our direction into the inside of the body. So breathe a few more breaths straight in. Just imagine that the oxygen is going and circling around all of that joint with lots of love and care. Okay. I like to lean to the side that the leg is straight and then pick up the other leg, pull it forward and then come back down. And then I usually just kind of jiggle my legs yeah, good job. Then tap them out a little bit. Sometimes just tapping them out gives them a little bit more, uh, the blood flow, you know, all that fresh oxygenated blood is now pushing down from the hips down out through your feet. Okay, it's time to go to the other side. So whatever leg was uh, straight, that one's the one that's now going to be bent. We're going to pull that in. Remember, if you've got any issues with the knee, maybe if you would like some support, you can throw a block under there. We're back to external rotation on this other side. If you have any pain in the back of the knee of the straight leg, remember that you can throw a little pillow or a blanket underneath it, prop it up a little bit. Feels so good. We're going back to the intention of the hip joint. So our ball and socket now 
of the bent leg. We're on this opposite hip. Closing your eyes and breathing in. Just creating intention for the space. Let's take four more breaths. We're gonna move into the internal rotation. So we'll pull the leg that was straight more in the middle of the body. Pick up your bent knee foot, set it on the ground, walk it out to the edge of the mat, and then turn the knee in. And remember, this is a place that you are more than welcome to stop right here because that is the internal rotation. You will feel it start to pull down the top of that thigh. If you can still create more compression in the knee and the hip, then you'll slide the knee to the ground. You'll take that foot and pull it straight back so that you can start stretching the front of that ankle as well. Remember that sometimes we're not symmetrical on both sides. Maybe you're able to do it on one side, but not the other. No judgment on your body for that. Just allow your body to go where it's capable of going today. And the idea is sometimes it's like, well, let me try it. Let me see how far I can go. Just remember that stretching discomfort, that's one thing, but pain is another. If you start to feel pain, then back off, go back to the place where you were just feeling maybe the stretch instead. We're back into our internal rotation, and we're gonna go now down into the knee. So we wanna bring that awareness of oxygen going into the space around the knee joint. And I'll let you guys just kind of sit in there. I'm gonna be quiet so that you can just sit and breathe and focus yourself on the sensations that you're experiencing in your own body. Two more breaths. Again, maybe lean over to the straight leg side and pull the opposite leg out that was bent. And we're gonna come back to center and shake and tap a little bit. Letting all that fresh blood go out to the end of the toes. Okay, now we're in the fun part. <laughs> If you're not having fun already, no, we are now. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go into deer. Now deer 
is both. You're gonna have the internal and external rotation. I'm gonna let you decide what side you wanna start with. So I'm gonna start by bringing my left foot in with the external rotation and then the right back. Now remember, if the internal rotation is difficult for you, you can bring the foot up and just turn the knee in, okay? If you can bring the leg all the way down, Again, when we're in deer, it's so comfortable to have that foot that's in the internal rotation of the hip, that foot out. Because we had it pulled back for half saddle, I'll let you decide what you wanna do. If it felt good to stretch the arch of your foot, pull the toes back again. If you wanna open up and stretch through the Achilles heel or that, that Achilles tendon, then pull your toes out this time. So that's going to be your choice. Now remember, the, the closer your feet are to your groin and towards your bootie, the bootie in the back, that is going to create the least amount of uh, compression and, there, and therefore resistance in the body. If you're not feeling any pain at all with your feet close like this, then start to bring your feet a little further away from the body and open it up. As soon as you do that, where are you guys going to feel it? Yep, right in the hips. It's going to go straight into there. So remember, if you feel pain, pull the feet back in, okay? This is where we're going to be for a few, for I want to say probably a couple minutes here. Now, other options, because if you have the feet in and your hip of the internal rotation is screaming, my suggestion would be to lean toward the leg that is the external rotation and lean over. It's going to take a lot of pressure out of that hip that's doing the internal rotation. And this is where the block again would come in handy. You can prop the blocks up and bring your elbow there and prop you up. Some of you may want to like lean all the way down and lay all the way down and that takes the most pressure out of your hip. If you're not feeling any pain at all, then continue to sit up because that's how we apply the um, um, the uh, the joint into again bringing it into that connective tissue. We want to try to relax as much as possible. We've got one more minute. Deer is the one that I usually have the most. Um, sensation of my body where it's really talking to me so if you're experiencing the same thing then know that you're not alone good about 30 more seconds if your mind has gone back out the door, pull it back by bringing your awareness into the breath and directing your oxygen into the hips. You want them to relax. You want them to turn loose and let loose. Okay, when we're coming out of this one, again, you're kind of leaning over, straightening the legs out, coming back into caterpillar, so to say, and then giving yourself, giving them a shake. Okay, and then we'll go to the other side. Remember, the closer your feet are to your body, the less, um, the less resistance into the joints. If there's no pain, then start to send the feet a little further away from your body and create more compression. If you're having pain in the internal rotation of the hip, remember that you can always lean over to the side and take some of that pressure out of that hip joint.
being able to work into internal and external rotation because they're both important. There's not one that's more important than the other when it comes to our body. And that's why I felt like it would be um, a good idea tonight to work into these kinds of poses where we honor our ability to do both. We, we live in a, do, a world of duality anyway. We've got light and dark, happy and sad. I mean, we need both to have balance. And so we work into the duality of what our hip, I'm sorry, what our joints are capable of. And we honor and express gratitude with every breath as we spend about one more minute in this pose. You guys are doing great. Just keep breathing. One more breath. Leaning out to the side, extending both legs forward, giving him a shake. Maybe leaning back on both arms. Again, this is going to pull the shoulder blades together as we open up through the front of the chest. And then I'm going to give you an option, if you would like, to either just lift the heart and drop the head back, or some of you may feel like pressing the hands down into the floor and lifting the hips up. Good. We're going to come back to center and lean forward. Just reaching forward wherever your range of motion takes you, sliding your hands down the front of your legs, allowing your head and chin to go down as we open up through the back of the spine now. Big stretch through the back of your legs to keep your knees bent if there's any pain back there. All right, we're doing that again, that same movement again. We're going to bring the hands behind you. Press them down into the floor, pull the shoulders back, lift the heart center. If you like, lift the hips, head back. The hips don't have to come up. You're getting a lot just by pulling the heart high and the shoulders back. On your next inhale, breathe deeply in through the nose. And then on your exhale, bring your hips and your chest back to center. Start bringing your hands up forward and leaning forward again, forward fold. Breathe in through the back part of your spine. Inhale, roll up slowly. And now we are down to the feet. <laughs> so we're going to do internal and external rotation of the feet. Now, if your legs are straight out in caterpillar, we're internally rotated if you point the toes. And then just to show you what the external looks like, you're going to pull your toes back and turn the toes out. So it's like this. <laughs> I don't know if you can see my feet. I think you can. Yeah. Okay, turn the toes in. So your heels are going to go out and the toes kind of, yeah, that's internal rotation. 
and then point them down and get a good stretch across the front of the ankles again. Yeah, and then pull the toes back and turn them out. If you if it feels good, point the toes again. We're gonna kind of play with that. We're gonna do that a few more times. You're gonna just I'm just gonna have you guys do this at your own pace. Just that's the internal and the external. The pointing the toes, flexing the toes back. That is, it's kind of, it feels good to do both. So I'm going to have you guys kind of do that again at your own, wherever that feels good for you. And we'll just spend a, just another minute going back and forth between internal and external rotation. Once you finish doing both, then we'll come back to center. Give our legs a little bitty shake. Pull them back together. All right, let's do butterfly. Bring the feet in. And we're going to just take a moment here where you're just taking your hands. You're rubbing your toes. Rubbing the ends of the toes. Sending them some love. Giving them some little added physical touch come down into the knuckle parts of the toes when we do that we're coming down into the heart and the lungs and then work your way down into the inner arches of the feet I just usually like use my index fingers my fingers on the outside to kind of give myself um, um, something to press into and I use the thumbs to do the the massaging and then coming down even into the heel. Okay, extend the legs, give them a shake. And then we're gonna go back to the hands real quick, come back into an easy pose. We're going to take the hands and um, Kind of like a prayer position, but we're going to, what is that called? <laughs> I can't remember what that's called. <laughs> Whatever it is, you guys are doing it. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to bring the elbows out to the side. And we're going to push forward. This is where you want to really make sure you're pulling your spine tall and the shoulders down. All right, we're going to draw the hands back in, flip them over, and draw the elbows down. So you're opening and stretching through the wrist just a little bit more. We're going to do that again. You're going to flip the palms over and push straight out. Spine tall, shoulders down. Good. And then flip them back over and draw the elbows in. Good job. Okay, unwind the fingers, shake them out. All right, and it's time for Shavasana already. That went really quick. So lying back in any position that feels comfortable to you. If you'd like to take a whiff of, if you have an oil nearby, take a moment to breathe that in before you lie down. If you have a crystal nearby that you want to grab, grab it. You can hold it in your hands. Grabbing any props that assure your comfort while you're in your shavasana. Okay. Making any last minute adjustments to your props and to your clothes. And then when you're ready, close your eyes. Our nose is designed to breathe in and out. 
the nose is the main part of our body utilized for breathing even more so than the mouth because the mouth was used and designed for eating however when we are processing energy out of the body breathing out through the mouth is directing the energy out of the part of the body that we're pushing it from so you will hear me talk during during the shavasana a few times about breathing out through your mouth so that we can direct the energy out of our joints and outside the body back into gaia where it can be recycled otherwise we'll be breathing in and out through the nose all right we're going to start by breathing in and out through the nose and we're directing our awareness in through the bottom of your feet. So in your mind, imagine that you're pulling oxygen from Mother Earth in through the bottom of your feet. We have two different energy lines that run through the meridians on either side of the body. The left is the feminine energy. The right is the male energy. And we're breathing through both of those energy lines, running the meridians up through the legs. So we're breathing in. Continue to breathe with your awareness up through your knees. Breathing with awareness up into your hips. And then bringing the awareness of that oxygen into the base of the spine at the tailbone. Our male and female energies run up either side of the spine, but they meet through the chakras. So I'm going to take you up through each chakra. So breathe into the tailbone and see the energy, the feminine on the left and the masculine on the right, just like two lines on either side. They come up through the legs, they meet at the tailbone and they cross. They separate and they go out, they go up the spine to the back of the navel and the sacral areas and they cross again. So as we do that, I want you to imagine breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth when they cross. So imagine we're at the top of the hips we're going to breathe in and run that energy up into the tailbone and then you'll exhale as that energy runs through the tailbone and just breathe it out. When you inhale, separate those energies, come up the spine to the back of the navel and sacral and exhale as you uh, cross them again through that area. When you inhale, come back out and separate them. We're going to come up to the bottom of the ribs and your exhale is going to cross them again at the bottom of the ribs. When you inhale, separate them back out. Come up to the back of the heart and your exhale, they'll cross at the heart. When you inhale, separate them out, go higher. We're going up to the back of the neck now at the throat and exhale, cross them together. Good. Separate them out, come up to the third eye right between your eyebrow center and exhale, cross them again. On your inhale, separate them out, come up to the crown of the head, exhale, cross them again. 
inhale, separate them and send them out the top of your head where they then direct down either side of your body. The one on the, the feminine on the left goes out to the left of you and the male on the right goes to the right. This is a torus shape. It goes out and it comes back up where it does it again. So you're going to inhale and pull them right back up again. You're going to exhale. And I'm going to let you guys go this time by yourself. You're going to exhale through each chakra. You're going to go at the base. They'll separate out. You'll exhale at the sacral and navel. They'll separate back out on the inhale. They'll exhale on the solar plexus at the base of the ribs. They'll inhale, they'll come out. They'll cross again with an exhale at the heart. They'll be exhaling again at the back of the neck, the throat chakra. Again at the third eye. Again at the crown. They shoot up, they split, and they go outside the body, and they come up. And they do that again. I want you to just now breathe in. Just know that this is a motion that just happens that you don't even have to pay attention to. Because it happens automatically. While your body continues to process oxygen in an energetic form, we call it prana, through your body, I'd like you to bring your awareness now back into the eyebrow center, into your third eye. And in this space, I'd like you to feel the belly rise and fall. Visualizing in your mind, I'd like you to imagine that your entire body is feeling heavy and weighted. That every joint was like lead. So that the whole spine, the shoulders, the elbows, the wrist, heavy. The hips, the knees, the ankles, all heavy and weighted into the floor. Your exhale breath can breathe out through the mouth, feeling heavy. Now in opposition, imagine light. Light as air. So as you're breathing in and out through the nose now, you're just bringing in that new fresh oxygen and you're feeling all of the joints become weightless. Almost like you can be so light that your whole body elevates and lifts off the floor. Just breathing in and out through your nose now. whole body feeling a sense of light and floating. Nowhere to go, nothing to do, just breathe now. Feeling the entire body turn off, turn loose, and let loose. Nowhere to go, nothing to do, just breathe.
Okay. Bringing your awareness back into your physical body. We're gonna start bringing movement back in. Maybe wiggle your fingers and toes. Maybe rock your head a little bit from side to side. Pull in a lot deeper breath now. You can use an exhale to blow all the air out, just letting out any last remaining tension that you've been holding on to. As you feel all of that float away from you, when you're ready, you'll roll over onto your side into a fetal position. And then when you're ready, pushing yourself back up into a seated posture. All right, just taking an easy pose, we're gonna take one more breath together. Nice and long through the spine, engaging through the pelvic girdle. We'll bring inhale, the arms up over your head, reaching up. Let the palms come together and exhale down. Good. Maybe it's just a little bow of your head as we honor ourselves our time for this practice. We honor the body where it was at and where it was able to go today. We are thankful to every one of our joints for the internal and external rotation that it gives us in bringing about balance and transformation, expansion and continued wellness all of the remaining days that we are here on this planet. I wanna thank you for letting me guide you through these poses tonight. Have a beautiful day. Namaste. All right. You guys hold tight. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.